How Robin Hood is finally being sued for turning off the buy button. I want to start by outlining the class action lawsuit against Robin Hood. We will discuss about previous attempts to sue them, and I also want to talk about why this time is very, very different. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember, this is not a financial advice video. So 741 Trey tweeted, he said, Clafter Lesser LLP files a class action lawsuit against Robinhood trading platform, representing investors who held call options on the platform as of the close on January 27, 2021, to purchase American Airlines, AMC, BlackBerry, Bed Bath and & Beyond, GameStop, and Nokia. It says the lawsuit alleges that Robinhood sold such options from January 28, 2021 through to February 19, 2021, and prohibited exercise of the underlying stocks, while the value of those affected options dropped dramatically and remained depressed, leading to significant losses from the alleged manipulation. Now, we've also got the Newswire article, the Newswire release that dives a little bit further in depth into this class action lawsuit. It says that Clafter Lesser LP, a highly experienced class action law firm, announces today that it's filed a class action lawsuit in the United States District Court for the Central District of California. And that lawsuit is seeking to represent investors who held call options on the Robinhood trading platform as of the close on January 27. So it says the lawsuit alleges that on January 28, Robinhood Markets, Incorporated, and two of its wholly owned subsidiaries, Robinhood Financial and Robinhood Securities, prohibited purchases of stocks underlying the affected options on its platform and also prohibited the exercise of those affected options and thereby only allowed the closing out of such positions. And it further alleges that during the period from January 29 through to February 4, Robinhood imposed significant limits on any such purchases and continued to prevent the exercise of those affected options on its trading platform. So you may remember a few weeks ago, Many trading platforms allowed users that held put options in Silicon Valley Bank to exercise those puts. They didn't allow them to sell the puts. They didn't allow them to buy more puts, but they did allow them to exercise. Now, back in January of 2021, Robinhood did not allow those customers to exercise those calls or even those puts. They did allow them to close them out, but they didn't allow the exercise to purchase more shares. And it's alleged that by virtue of these purchase and exercise prohibitations and limitations, Robinhood engaged in market manipulation. Now, you may remember that back in late 2021, both Robinhood and Citadel were sued for illegal market manipulation. Now, this case did end up being thrown out by the judge Cecilia Altenega. But as Bruce Wayne tweeted, he said, we didn't forget about you. Judge Cecilia Altenega, who dismissed the Citadel Robin Hood case, without prejudice, but obviously it turned out back then that her spouse, a.k.a. the spouse of Cecilia Altenega, worked as a partner at one of the defendant's law firm. So actually, Cecilia Altenega had a husband that was a partner at the law firm that was actually defending Citadel. Therefore, there was a clear conflict of interest, but unfortunately, this was only brought up after the case had already been dismissed. Now, this time around, there's a few crucial differences, and the first one is that this time, Clafter Lessert is the law firm leading this lawsuit. And it says here that Clafter Lessert LLP has extensive experience in prosecuting class actions, and the founding partners of the firm who have extensive class action experience have recovered over a billion dollars for the benefit of classes in numerous cases. So this time we have a very solid law firm taking our case and backing our corner and backing those users of Robin Hood who did lose out. And also hopefully this time around we have a different judge that is not Cecilia Altenega. That does not have a conflict of interest. It will be very interesting and very exciting to see if this case does make its way to court and does go through the discovery stage. And I think depending on how this case goes against Robin Hood, 
It then builds a bit of a precedence and also a backstory for further cases against Citadel. So far, this case is obviously about Robin Hood turning off the buy button. If this case against Robin Hood is successful, it leaves way and opens the doors to a broader case on illegal market manipulation against other firms like Citadel. I am glad that Robin Hood is finally being resued for turning off the buy button, and I do hope this case goes well. And I do hope those users of Robin Hood receive some kind of reimbursement. And as I said, I do also hope it sets a precedent to open the doors to go after other firms like Citadel. Now, something I found very interesting, which actually ties into my video from yesterday, was Adam Aron's tweet that he made this morning. Adam Aron tweeted saying, with more and more electric-powered and hybrid vehicles being sold every day in the U.S., and people often parking their cars at AMC theaters for about three hours, do you think we should install for pay electric charging stations at our theaters where we control the parking? Basically, Adam Aron is suggesting, should we work with electrically powered vehicle manufacturers, such as Tesla, to install electrical charging points, as suspended POS added? He said, why does it feel like Adam Aron and Elon Musk are communicating indirectly on here on Twitter? This is actually a tweet from Adam Aron that I didn't actually expect, but any kind of partnership with Elon Musk is always going to be positive. And if Adam Aron and AMC do install electric vehicle charge points in their AMC theater car parks, it's just another revenue stream for AMC. Now, I also want to talk about another broker that is definitely lending out your shares without your permission unless you've turned off that share lending option. The other day I spoke about Wealthsimple, but today I'm now speaking about public. As AMC for all tweeted, they said confirmed public does indeed lend your shares out by default. You must message them and tell them to opt out. Even if you've opted out of share lending on public in the past, it's likely your shares are now being lent out unless you re-opt out through the direct message system. And he said, let's remove another source of shares for the hedge funds to short with and drive that cost to borrow even higher. This is obviously something that's not only beneficial for you because it means that your AMC shares won't be lent out, but it's also damaging for these short hedge funds because it means the cost to borrow rate will skyrocket even more as more and more platforms have to recall their shares out of that share lending pool. Because users are turning off share lending, that means it's going to be even more difficult for these hedge funds to locate shares. The short and the cost of borrowing rate continues to go up. So, as I've said, if you haven't already, please do be sure to turn off your share lending or just change platforms altogether to another trading platform. As you can see, this seems to already be having some effect as the AMC cost of borrow rate has just hit a new all-time high of 979% as an average. All platforms seem to have different share lending rates between Webull, between Ortex, and between other platforms on top of that. But what this platform is showing is a new all-time high. And again, you can see over the last year just how this cost of borrow rate has absolutely skyrocketed. It was down here between 0 and 1 or 2% until it skyrocketed right now up to 979%. I think the more we can force up this cost of borrow fee, the closer we get to the squeeze. Now you may be saying, okay, that's all well and good. That's all some great trust me borrower information. But obviously, if we can get this short borrowed fee up to, say, 40,000%, I think it would practically instantly liquidate these hedge funds. A cost of borrowing fee of over 1,000% is already sky high. But if we can drive this borrow fee higher to say 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, or 40,000%, these shorts have no option but to close. Now it seems another giant hedge fund, SoftBank, seems to be closing out of positions to shore up their collateral for their underwater margin positions. You can see PIQ tweeted saying that SoftBank moves to sell down most of its Alibaba stake as they held around 9% of the company. And as Saka Trades tweeted, he said, Masser is dumping his undervalued bags to shore up collateral for his underwater margin positions. Now, I don't know if SoftBank is shorting ANC directly or even indirectly for that matter, but this is exactly what I've been talking about that many other hedge funds are doing. 
They're closing out of their smaller short positions to shore up collateral for their underwater larger short positions like those AMC shorts. They're closing out of their shorts in companies like Coinbase, Affirm, Tesla, NVIDIA, and many other companies so they can shrop their other underwater short positions on companies like AMC and GameStop. And finally, Zero Hedge tweeted saying the FONC minutes show that staff expect a mild recession, but all members of the Fed back continuous quantitative tightening and another 25 basis point hike. So it seems that actually the Fed is indeed expecting at least a mild recession to happen over the next few months of this year. I do expect the Fed are underestimating the true damage that's about to happen and that it won't be just a mild recession. It'll be a very severe recession. But it does go to show even the Fed expects the market to fall further, especially if we do enter this at least very mild recession. If the market falls further, those underwater short positions and those underwater long positions continue to get even worse, and these hedge funds get closer and closer to that margin call. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.